As you see by your bulletin, the title of the message today is How Law Becomes Grace. Uh, uh the seems like a strange title, doesn't it? Three more weeks, it'll be Easter. Now what makes Easter so wonderful? And I think that in the next uh, uh, three le uh, certain messages, God is going to show us how Easter is so wonderful. Uh, now, I don't have the next three sermons yet. <laughs> but, but I kind of think that God is going to show us how Easter becomes grace. Uh, 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 我们读圣经的时候，我们都知道，读圣经的人都知道，圣经从创世纪到启示录都是讲的同一个主题。But to us, there seems to be two messages. 但是呢，你真的读的时候，你可能刚开始的时候会觉得圣经是两个主题哦，是两个信息哦。The law of Moses and the gospel of Jesus. 好像是旧约是在讲摩西的律法。Let's look and see what the Bible says. Now, God gave Moses the law. And the reason he gave the law was to direct Israel to God. 这原因为什么他要把律法赐给犹太人？是因为要引导犹太人转向神。We know it was based on the Ten Commandments. 大家知道这个摩西的律法主要的核心是十诫。I suppose I should tell you what the Ten Commandments are now, but I, I want you you look in the Bible in the Exodus 20 and you read it. 我本来是应该把这十诫再跟大家重申一遍，但是我想这不需要，大家可以自己去好好再去查阅，是在出埃及记二十章。See, this is the law that Moses gave to Israel. 这个律法是耶和华通过摩西颁给以色列的。Started with the Ten Commandments. 是从十诫开始。And then it included a very strict lifestyle. 然后呢，它包括了一种非常严谨的、很严格的生活方式。See, Israel was restricted in how to approach God. See, they could approach God only through a priest. They could approach God only they were not allowed to up, uh, come to God empty-handed. They had to have something to give to God when they came to God. And when they sinned, they had to sacrifice an animal that belonged to them. 他们必须要牵一头这个动物祭物，这个祭物羊也好，都必须要是属于他们自己的，这个来到神的面前献给神做赎罪祭。Now it cost them something to make peace with God。当你犯罪的时候，与神就有仇。那么你要跟神和好，你必须啊，你需要花代价。Now we want to ask, when did this law begin? 那我们就要问了，这条这个这样的律法什么时候开始的？ did it begin with Moses? 是不是摩西才开始了呢? 
Actually, it appears this was the, the law was a carryover from what God had instructed Adam to do. Uh, 这个律法的这个精神是从什么时候开始呢？实际上从亚当就开始了，然后一路就传下来了。See, Adam knew about animal sacrifices. 比方说，我们知道亚当其实就很清楚，就是要献祭的这个这么一个仪式。Now, he told his sons what they were supposed to do when they came to God. 呃，比方说亚当告诉吩咐他自己的儿子们。你们要到耶和华面前去，是要通过什么样的方式？ See how else could Abel uh, know that he had to sacrifice a lamb to God? 你想否则的话，亚当的次子亚伯，他怎么会知道必须要啊这个献羊羔给耶和华呢？ Now Cain would also have known. 啊，我们知道，那么既然次子知道，那么应该是说长子该隐也知道。but he refused to follow his father's instructions. 但是亚当的长子这个该隐，他就拒绝接受他父亲的这个这个吩咐。And God rejected his sacrifice. 所以耶和华就拒绝了该隐的祭物。And so the people way back there before the flood, they knew about the uh animal sacrifices. 哦，在洪水的时代，这个当时的人也知道。这个动献祭的献赎罪祭的这么一个祭司系统，And these animal sacrifices continued on into history. 整个祭司的这个这个祭物的这么一个这个这么一个精神，一直几千年来从来就没有断绝过。In Genesis, uh, we read that uh, after the flood, Noah sacrificed animals to God. 我们刚才就领圣餐时就领受了，就是当挪亚在洪水以后，他出出方舟以后做的第一件事情是什么？就是献祭给耶和华。And uh, later Abraham uh, uh, sacrificed animals to God. 后来亚伯兰亚伯拉罕他也献祭给神。And it seems like everybody knew about animal sacrifices. 似乎旧约的时代每个人都知道这个献祭就献祭物的这么一个这么一个这么一件事 It was common knowledge in those days. 说明在旧约的时代献祭是一个普通的一个知识就是叫常识 You may remember what Isaac asked his father on the way to Mount Moriah. 大家还记得这个亚伯兰兰的儿子跟着他一起去亚摩利山的时候 他是这样说 he said, "Here, Father, here is wood, and here is fire. But where is the lamb?" 他说,爸,咱这个祭坛也搭好了,柴火也有了,这个就木头也有了,火也有了,这祭物呢? He has seen sacrifices many times, and always there was a lamb or one of the other animals that had to be sacrificed. 意思什么呢? 意思十几岁的以撒,他知道。这个他看到爸已经搞过很多次了，什么呢？就是要有祭坛，要有木头，要有柴，要要有柴火，然后一定是要有一头祭物是放在这个祭坛上。Now this is what people knew. These uh, sacrifices were performed before God. 所以呢，这个呢，很清楚的，当时的人就是献祭要献给谁呢？献给天上的啊，坐着为王的耶和华。and they were performed to deliver them from God's wrath. Uh, now God's wrath, which was against sin, brought death. So the law showed them how to avoid that wrath. 所以这个律法系统,它的目的只有一个,就是告诉人如何逃避上帝的震动。Now this is something we have to remember. 那我们现在就要来牢记一个重要的道理。The law was righteous. 就是律法是公义的。It was absolutely righteous. 律法是完全公义的。It was given by a righteous God. 因为律公义的律法是有公义的神所赐的。
and uh, anybody who followed the law perfectly would be righteous. So, it was given to lead people to live a righteous life, a righteous life before God. Now we know that we know that man had sinned. And man had lost his original righteousness. And so man had to do something to compensate for that sin that he done. That was why there had to be animal sacrifices. 这才需要做一件事，就是要有替罪的作为祭物来代替罪人所这个所该承受的这个损失和牺牲。And now I want you to look at uh, Romans three twenty.请大家翻到新约圣经罗马书第三章二十节。Let's see if I can find that here. Somewhere in the New Testament.罗马书三章二十节。The animal sacrifices could not justify man before God. read that chapter, that verse in, uh, in Romans 3.20. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. And through the law, and for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. See, with the law, it could only say he recognized his sin. And according to God's law, uh, a death had to be paid for that sin. And the animal paid that debt by dying. 那这个祭祀系统里面的这个替罪的祭物呢，他就付了这个罪的代价。See, but but the animal, not being man, could not justify the person. 呃，所以意思说，大家小心听啊，就是这个祭物死了，他赎了人的这一个罪，但是因为祭物不是人，所以祭物尽管赎了人的这一个罪，但是祊物不能让人称义。See. Under the law, that sin was taken care of. But the man was not made just before God. For man to be justified, he had to die. Friends, this is where grace steps in. Now, there's something we have to remember. God's law never changed. Today, we are living under grace. Uh, All we have to do is believe in Jesus. And we will become righteous before God. You know the verse in second uh, in uh, second Corinthians? Second Corinthians what? Can you tell me? We've, we've done this so many times, you should remember it by now. 
。来，哥林多后书第五章。He made him who knew no sin, five twenty one. He made him to who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 呃，我们看见在哥林多后书第五章的最后一节，哥林多后书第五章最后一节，二十一节，神使那无罪的替我们成为罪，好叫我们在他里面成为神的义。That, that's a marvelous word,、uh, verse. 这一段的圣经在圣经里面啊、呃，真的是啊、呃，非常的重要，非常的令人震惊的一段圣经。What it says is absolutely amazing. 这是特别奇妙的一段，其中一段圣经之一。Made him who knew no sin to become sin。他说什么？说上帝使呢，没有罪的，根本就不知道罪为何物的那一个基督，替我们成为罪。You see, the, you see where grace is beginning to get, step into this picture. 我们看见恩典是怎么样介入到这个律法里面来的呢 ？And the law is not being removed. 这个律法有没有被废掉？没有，律法没有被废弃。We, uh, we, uh, and and、um, also, besides giving righteousness, we are given eternal life. 除了我们成为上帝的义，在基督里面成为上帝的以外，我们还被赐予永生。Look at John three thirty six， 在约翰福音第三章的三十六节。The last verse in John three， 在约翰福音三章的最后一节。He who believes in his son in the son has eternal life. 在这个第约翰福音三章二十六节说，信子的人有永生。But the second part of the verse is, is, dread, is rather dreadful. 当然，这个第二十六节的后半节的圣经让人听完以后非常的惧怕。But, 他说什么呢 ？But he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. 这个后半节的经文让人绝望的是什么呢？不信子的人。得不着永生，上帝的震怒藏在他身上。You see, we just said that the law was to remove people from the wrath of God. 我们刚才讲了，律法的功效，这个是引导人能把人带到一个地步，就是让人能够逃逃离、逃避神的震怒。And here in John three thirty six says the same thing. 那么现在在约翰福音三章的三十六节也告诉我们，通过一个方法可以让我们逃离、逃脱神的震怒。He who does not believe or does not obey the Son, uh, doesn't have life, but the wrath of God is on him. 那么不信子的人，不相信耶稣的人是什么呢？他不但得不到永生，而且上帝的震怒和刑罚就藏在他的身上。Now we ask the the question. All right then, does that negate? The law. 那你说，那是不是刚才我讲的这段圣经就是什么？就废弃了原来这个旧约里面的那个那个律法吗 ？Okay. Let、um, what let let's look at the Old Testament. See what the Old Testament says about. 那我们来看看旧约里面到底是怎么讲？到底恩典是不是废弃了律法 ？Now, you you read a passage just a little bit ago from the Old Testament. 我们刚才读的这段的圣经，呃，是在以赛亚书五十五章的这段圣经，是就是在旧约里头。那 Isaiah lived under the law。我们首先要知道，大家知道这个以赛亚的时代，以赛亚是活在律法之之下的时代。If you read、uh, Isaiah, he keeps telling、uh, Israel where she is breaking the law。哦，他一直是通过。以赛亚，耶和华通过以赛亚不停地警告犹太人说：“你们在这个在在在触犯啊、呃、耶和华的律法。” But if you look carefully at what Isaiah is saying, he is also、uh, talking about salvation. 但是你要是仔细的读这个以赛亚书，你会发现他不但讲律法，他实际也讲救恩、拯救的恩典。And he says, and he he told him that. This salvation that's coming is not only for Israel. Ah, 而且他不但讲这个这这个救恩是不但是给以色列人的
See, the 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 law, uh, the law was for Israel. 这个呃，我们知道律法是颁给犹太人的。But the salvation is for Israel, but not only for Israel. 但是这这个救恩不仅仅是给以色列的，它是颁给以色列。Just look back, uh, back to chapter forty-nine of Isaiah. 如果你在以赛亚书，请大家朝前翻到四十九章。And uh, verse and verse six. 四十九章的第六节。And he is talking about the servant of Jehovah, who is Jesus. 这个四十九章的以赛亚书是在讲这个主的仆人，主的仆人就是讲基督耶稣。And he says, "It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also make you a light to the nations, so that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth." 在四十九章的六节说。现在他说：“你做我的仆人，使雅各众支派复兴，使使以色列中得保全的归回。啊、呃，这个尚未小事，我还要使你做外邦人的光，叫你施行我的救恩，直到地极。” That's a marvelous verse. 这个是实在是太太奇妙了。The the servant of Jehovah was to bring salvation to Israel, but he says that's too small a job. 哦，这个他在讲什么呢？他说，这个基督耶稣不但要把这个复兴和这个呃这个带给以以色列，你这个仅仅把复兴和拯救带给以色列尚为小事儿。There are billion and a half Chinese around the world in this world too。这还有十五亿的中国人可怎么办呢 ？And there are billion uh Indians in this world too。还有超过十亿的印度人要怎么办呢 ？So he says, I'm making you a light to China. And to and to India and to the rest of the world. So he says, "My servant Jesus Christ, he wants to be a light to the world, to the Chinese light, to the Indian light, to the whole world light." You see, in the drama of salvation, Isaiah says, "Israel is Israel is a servant God uses to bring His salvation about." 呃，这个在以赛亚书里面实际上讲到这个整个救恩的这个大幕拉开以后，有有有一些的角色要登场，其中一个是以色列，以色列也是耶和华的仆人，但是他的做这个工作是做什么呢？他是要预备好这个道路，使得救恩可以从以色列而出。Now in chapter fifty、um, five,、uh, uh, Isaiah makes the strangest statement. 呃、uh, ，在以赛亚书第五十五章里面，以赛亚讲了一段非常奇怪、奇怪透顶的一段话。We have an English word for it, which is oxymoron. <laughs> 我们在英文里面有一个字，这个字 oxymoron， 还有什么 ？You know what oxymoron is? Oxymoron is an impossibility. I say that、uh, this paper is black white. 啊，这个他，比方说，他说我这张桌，这个这个是这张白纸，是黑白相间的纸，那实际上根本就是颠倒黑白，实际上，对不对？它根本就是张白纸嘛。It can't be black and it can't be white. It can't be both black and white. 就是这是一个一件不可能是他说的这个事情很荒唐，对不对？就是这个是呃水火不相容的，这个这个就是一张白纸怎么可以是黑白两种颜色同时呢？ See, that's an. That's what we say is an oxymoron. It's an impossibility. Ah, 我不知道怎么翻译。那在在在这个在这个呃中文里面有一种在哲学上有个用词就是叫悖论，就是一个论论语里面似乎两个东西啊同同时是不可能，两个都对，但是这句话是对的。So Isaiah starts out this chapter. 所以呢，在以赛亚在第五十五章里面就是这样开始的一个悖论。And he says, "You who have no money, come buy and eat." 他说了一句非常奇怪的话。他说：“你们没有不用这个没有钱的也可以来，你们都来买了吃。Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost.” 他说：“你们不但买了吃，你们还要买酒和奶，用什么呢？不用钱买，也不用价值买。You can't buy something without currency。你既然是要买一样东西，但是你又不用钱，你用什么去买呢？” 
Try try doing it. Try buying something without currency. 你们到哪个这个这个超市今天下午就可以去。说我没有钱，我可以可以买多少东西。They will they will send the police around saying you're stealing. 啊，你你要是那个那肯定是会打，他们他们会打九幺幺，反正警察来来对付你了。And um, so what is uh? What is Isaiah talking about? 那么我们想请问了，这个以赛亚在这里说什么吗 ？He cannot be talking about the law. 哦、呃，在这个地方一定不是在讲论律法的问题。The law required money. 因为这个律法是什么？这个欠债还钱、杀人偿命，那个是你要花代价的，你不能随便拿了吃，你要买了吃了。Let Let Let's look in the New Testament, see what it says. Matthew twenty one. 在马太福音第二十一章，看看新约里面是怎样说。Matthew twenty one verse twelve。马太福音的二十一章的第十二节。And Jesus entered the temple and cast out all those who were buying and selling in the temple, and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. 大家看见在马太福音二十一章的十二节，啊，马太福音十二章的啊二十一章的十二节，耶稣进了神的殿，赶出店里一切做买卖的人，推倒兑换银钱之人的呃这个桌子和卖鸽子之人的这个凳子。你你说 ，anybody back in those days， 呃、uh, ，people came to、uh, worship。And to offer a sacrifice. Uh, in that time, this person went to the temple to worship. Then he did what? He paid money to buy these things and then to the temple to offer sacrifices. Many of them did not have farms. 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 So they would come to the temple, and here were people selling lambs. 那么，所以他们到圣殿上做什么呢？他们就要买一头羊。买一头羊的时候呢，他们看见圣殿上有人在卖羊了。And、uh, so they paid money for the lamb, so that the lamb belonged to them, and then had that sacrifice for their sins. 这个羊本来不是他们的，但是他们花了银钱以后买了这个羊，这个羊就属于他们了。然后他们牵着属于自己的羊来到这个祭司那里啊，呃，这个来交给祭司，用这头羊来赎自己的罪。So the law required that it will cost you something. 所以我们看见这个圣律法是要求什么？你有罪，那一定要付出代价了。So in this verse that Isaiah said in the in verse one here. He is picturing something different. 那么，所以我们回到旧约圣经的以赛亚书五十五章的第一节，他什么呢？他说，这个第一节一定是在讲一跟律法不不相同的一个一个概念。Now, we have to remember this. We have to recognize this. The same salvation that is being offered to Israel is being offered to the world. 呃，我们有一件事是大家都明白的。就是同样的救恩，不但赐给以色列人，也赐给外邦人。But the way to get it is different. 那么，但是要获得救拯救、获得救恩的方法是不一样的。See, the way to get the salvation is different. 这个得到救恩的这个方法，犹太人和外邦人方法不一样。呃、uh, ，both offer righteousness. 这个呃，他们双方都需要去啊、呃，这个这个去献这个公义。The law and the、uh, and the grace offer righteousness. 无论是律法还是恩典，他们都是来献一样东西，就是公义。Both offer peace with God. 他们最后都得到一个结局，这个结局是呃与神和解，与神和好。Both require a sacrifice to be made. 那么这两种都需要，都有一个要求，就是必须要献一个祭物。In the law, man makes the sacrifice. 在律法里面是人来献这个祭物。In grace, God makes the sacrifice. 那么在恩典里面是上帝献那个祭物。In both. 
the law is satisfied. 在两种情况之下，律法都得到满足。You see, grace is not different from the law; it's the same thing. 所以我们要知道，这个律法，呃，恩典和律法，并不是呃，恩典把律法给改写了。嗯，不是的，他们实际上有同样的精神。But in verse one of chapter five, uh, grace in grace, man paid nothing. 呃，在这个五十五节，在五十五章以赛亚书五十五章第一节里讲到了，实际上什么呢？就是在救恩里面，在拯救的恩典里面，人什么都没有做。He believed and he was justified. 当罪人相信的时候，他就称义了。You see, John one twelve says, "If anyone received him, they became the children of God." 在约翰福音一章十二节说，凡接待他的，他就赐给他们权柄做上帝的儿女。Now Isaiah, when he wrote this, I expect that he didn't know how this was going to happen. 啊，当然我们知道，先知以赛亚写这个以赛亚书的时候，他并不知道将来要如救恩要如何的成就。All he knew was how they were to get this righteousness. 啊，他他所知道的全部就是什么呢？就是罪人要如何得着这个义。See, you who have no money, come and buy, uh, and eat. 他说，你们没有银钱的也可以来，你们都来买了吃。Come buy wine and and milk without money and without cost. 他说，你不用银钱，也不用价值，也可以买了酒和奶。And、uh, so he he um he was telling them that you don't have to pay anything. But you have to buy it. 他怎么说呢？他说你付不用付一分钱，但是呢，你想要得到的东西，你必须要买了。In his mind, in Isaiah's mind, the stupendous thing was they could get it without with they could get it without having to pay money for it. 哦，对以赛亚的时代的人，旧约的律法系统下的人，这件事是听起来是极度荒唐的事情。什么意思呢？我这东西既然是要买的，但是呢，我又不用花我的钱的，但是我不用花我的钱的呢，我又必须需要去买了。这件事对他们来讲，那根本是极度荒唐、不可能的事。But was there n o t There was there nothing that they had to do? 但是这个旧恩里面，实在是他们什么都做不了，他们做了什么也没有用哦。Read verse two. 我们看五十五章的二节。And here he asks the question first: Why do you spend money for what is not bread, and your wages for what does not satisfy? 他先问，他先两个问句。他说：“你们为何花钱买那不足为食物的，用劳碌得来的买那不使人饱足的呢 ？”Then he says, "Listen carefully to me." 然后他怎么说？他说：“你们要留意听我的话。” Listen carefully to whom? 听我的话是听谁的话呀 ？To me, which is the servant of Jehovah, which is Jesus. 听我的话是是听耶和华的仆人，耶和华的仆人就是基督耶稣。He says, "Listen carefully to me and eat what is good." 他说呢，你们留意听我的话，听基督耶稣的话呢，就是什么？就能吃那美物。And um, and then in and then you um. And then you come down into verse three. 然后第三节呢 ？And he says, "Incline your ear and come to me." 他说呢，你们就当就近我来，侧耳而听。And then listen that you may live. 他怎么说？他说你们侧耳而听，就必得活。He didn't say pay money that you may live. 在这地方什么呢？他说：“你不是说你花价、花银钱、花代价，你就可以活了。Listen that you may live. 你侧耳听我的话，你就可以得活了。Now how could that? How could that be? 那你说这个这个怎么可能呢 ？You know the verse in John seventeen. 在约翰福音第十七章，我们都看过这段圣经。Verse two. 在约翰福音十七章的第二节。See, even as thou. Givest him authority over all mankind, that to all whom thou hast given him, he may give eternal life. 在约翰福音十七章的二节，正如你曾赐给他权柄管理凡有血气的
，叫他将永生赐给你所赐给他的人。You see, this servant of Jehovah that Isaiah was talking about has eternal life in him. He has it. 这个以以赛亚在五十五章里面所讲的这个耶和华的仆人是什么呢？他手里有永生。But we have to listen to him. 既然他手里有永生。那么他就可以让我们得活，但是我们必须要侧耳听他的话。We have to listen to Jesus。我们必须要听耶和华的话啊，耶耶稣的话。We have to come to Jesus。我们必须要来到基督面前。And there we can get eternal life. It will be given to us。哦，我们在他那个地方，我们就可以得着这个这个救恩。那么。这个救恩要白白的赐给我们。You see, he says, "Listen to me, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you." 他说，你们要听我的话，就什么呢？我就必与你们立永约。这是在第三节。Can you remember we just took the communion? 我们刚才已经刚刚领了这个圣餐。And the cup was a symbol of his blood. 这个杯是。他的血的这个就是代表耶稣基督的保险。And he says, "This is my cup, which、uh, seals the covenant between God and you and me." 基督说，他说这是我的血所立的新约，是立什么？是你们和神之间的这个新约，是用我的血所立的。And so he said, "He will, um, uh, he will, and I will make." An everlasting covenant with you. 他说呢，我要必与你们立永约。这是在五十五章的三节。Then he adds a very interesting little statement. 他最后后面又加了一点非常有意思的一一句话。According to the faithful mercies shown to David. 他说就是应许大卫那可靠的恩典。What were these faithful mercies shown to David? 那请问，什么是可靠的恩典是给大卫的？嗯、uh,。David lived long time before before、uh, Isaiah. Oh, 大家知道以赛亚写这个书的时候，公元七百年。那个一这个这个大卫是远远这个比以赛亚这个之前很多年啊。And you read what how uh God um you read his history and you you can't find what Isaiah is talking about. 呃，我们如果读这个历史的话，我们都就就。那个时候的人会有一个会有疑问，什么叫做应许给大卫可靠的恩典呢 ？Now David was a good king. 哦，大卫是一个一个一个一个一个好的君王。And God established for him a dynasty. 呃，然后耶和华亲手帮他建立了以色列王国。That would that he said will last forever. 呃，然后耶和华说，你的国要立到永远。Now David's dynasty. Some of the kings that came after David. Were not good at all. 呃，大家读以以色列历史就知道，以在这个大卫以后的他的很多的这个君王，历代的君王当中有很多啊，根本就是一塌糊涂的昏君啊，一塌糊涂的非常糟糕的。King Manasseh, who lived after Isaiah, was desperately wicked. 呃，在以赛亚以后有一个叫马拿西王的，那个根本就是十足的这个昏昏君，十足的啊，这个这个罪恶的君王。But the mercies of God to David was that even in spite of those wicked kings, the Savior still came through his line. 但是无论是大卫的后代当中有多少是昏君糊涂的，或者这个犯罪的，这个、呃、他们犯罪抵挡耶和华的，但是神还是说。我要让你的国建立不倒，意思什么呢？最后弥赛亚还是降世为大卫的后裔。So David can look down into the future to all his children, and he sees way, way down there, one called the Son of God, which was related to him. 这个大卫，他看见，在几千年以后，有一个称为他的儿，上帝的儿子的。将士为人的时候，居然是成为大卫的后裔，是大卫的这个家的后人。And he saw him die for all mankind's sin, including David's. 而且大卫不但看见他将士为自己的后后裔，而且他看见什么呢？
他赎清了所有全人类的罪人的罪，包括大卫自己的这个罪，都由他的子孙这个上帝的儿子降世为人的弥弥赛亚替他赎了这个罪。Now anyone who accepts that death as his own， 那么每一个凡接受基督的死作为自己的死的这样的人 ，he will be given。God's righteousness. 他将会被赐给上帝的义。So he can now come to God. 那通因着基督，人就可以来到上帝的面前。And buy food that gives life. 然后他们就可以来买这个食物，这个食物是让人活的食物。And he can buy it without money and without price. 那么他们来买这个食物的时候呢，不用钱买了。It didn't cost you anything to get eternal life. 你你不需要牺牲，付出任何的代价，就可以得着永生。And uh, so, um, we we didn't pay, but we got that eternal life, uh, from Jesus. 我们没有付代价，但是我们从基督那里领受了这么一个啊、uh, 这个永生。And so, the law. Is completely satisfied by grace. So, I want to make a conclusion. The law is how to be satisfied. It is the condition that the law is satisfied. You see how law became grace. So, our topic just now began by saying that the law is how to be satisfied. It is the condition that the law is satisfied. You see how law became grace. So, our topic just now began by saying that the law is how to be satisfied. It is the condition that the law is satisfied. You see how law became grace. So, our topic just now Lord, please help me to understand this grace. Uh, 我要求神来帮助我明白这样的恩典。And Michael will close. Yeah. 我们大家一同的开声祷告，然后我们我来做结束。Our Father, come. Father, we thank you for this grace, this amazing grace. This grace is not cheap because you paid the tremendous price for this grace. We don't have to pay anything. We didn't pay anything, and we can't pay anything for this grace. But you purchased. The price you paid is the blood of Jesus Christ, is your Son, is our Lord. You give our Lord to us, so that we don't have to pay anything, but we can purchase this. This grace in our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. Thank you for satisfying this perfect law by grace. Lord, we thank you that you satisfied this law. By law, we all are under the wrath of God, the punishment we deserve for our sins. But by grace. Father, you paid that. You took the wrath, and you replaced us on the cross. You paid the price for sins, so that we can receive forgiveness of for our sins, and we receive the eternal life for free. Father, we thank you. This wonderful message, this wonderful grace, and this wonderful life we received. Shall we never forget? That we get it for free, but you give all to purchase it. 
shall we never forget. After we received, we should go out and tell the people about His grace, which satisfied the law, the righteous law, from the righteous and holy God. We thank you. 主啊，我们感谢你这样的恩典。我们白白的得到，我们什么都没有做，我们什么都做不了，我们什么都不需要做，我们就是白白的领受。但是恩典，并不贱价，恩典并不是一个便宜货，因为你花了至高无上的代价，你把你的儿子舍了，你把基督钉在十字架上，把他的身体拉开，你把他的鲜血全部放光。你让他下到地狱，你让他下到阴间，让他在阴间三天，主啊，第三天，你才让他复活。他的复活是告诉我们，罪人将要面临审判，律法要得到这个伸张，正义需要得到满足。但是我们不需要，我们这些罪人不需要为自己的罪负责，只要我们信靠耶稣基督。我们罪人不需要为自己的罪负责，不是。最不得到惩这个惩罚，乃是你在我们的位置上替我们挨那个鞭子，你在我们罪人的位置上替我们上十字架，你在我的位置上，主啊，下到阴间，下到坟墓里面，主啊，感谢你这样的恩典，这样的大爱，凡有耳的都应当听，凡听见的都是有福的，凡听见的都应当相信，因为凡相信的。都必得救，感谢你。但愿我们这些已经得救的、已经明白的、已经相信的、领受了这个恩典和永生的人，不是在这个世上逍这个逍遥法外，不在这个世上浪费神的恩典，乃是主啊，我们到这个世界上去，把基督耶稣的拯救的恩典和福音，告诉这世上的人，使得更多的人能够得救。主啊，感谢你，让我们刚强壮胆。我们到这个世上去，告诉人家，告诉这世上的人，你们不用赢钱，不用代价，你们就可以买了吃，买了美物，得享肥甘，心中喜乐，得着永恒的生命。我们感谢你，主啊，我们也为远在中国的这个，这个担着传福音负担的两位姐妹，主啊，我们把他们恭敬的交托在恩主你的手里，你的圣灵感动他们，你的恩典与他们同行。主啊，他们在你的恩典里面活着，他们也要为恩典的福音做这个代言人。主啊，求你的圣灵带领他们，求你的圣灵也赐给他们口才，赐给他们智慧，赐给他们这个忍耐，更赐给他们信心，让他们能够把和平的福音当作鞋子，穿上全副的军装。主啊，在你的保保护之下、保守之下，主啊，在你的带领之下，做基督耶稣的这个大使，福音的大使，做这恩典的使者。我们感谢你，我们这样的祷告、祈求，是奉耶稣基督的圣名。阿门。我们还有一首诗。